What's going on, smart people? Legendre polynomials are a special class of functions that are solutions to a certain kind of differential equation, and they played a really big role in my senior thesis, and unfortunately when I was trying to learn how to work with them in a coding context, I couldn't find too many resources online about that, so I thought today what I would do is make a video showing people how to code Legendre polynomials for different n, and then we're also going to learn how to plot them out to see what they look like. So let's get started. All right, the first thing that I always do, no matter what, when, it's, when you have to do some coding in Python, is you gotta import the necessary libraries. You gotta import the things that you wanna use or borrow. And this is just so that you don't have to write every single little thing from scratch. So let's see, so I'm gonna import NumPy as NP. NumPy is just one of the standard math libraries that's me use things like arrays. Import matplotlib.pyplot. That's the standard plotting library that's going to make us make pre 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 pretty, pretty pictures. Okay. Uh, also going to import from scipy.special import Legendre. So scipy is one of the really nice math libraries in Python, and that lets you get access to special functions, and special functions are normally just solutions to differential equations. So this will give you access to things like Bessel functions, or like this, Legendre polynomials. Um, like I said, Legendre polynomials are solutions to the differential equation, the Legendre differential equation. So that means that it's a function, that means it has a value at all of these different x values. First step is to define what x values we want to evaluate it at. So I'm going to call that x vals. Uh, let's see, zero. Or let's go from negative one to one n. So what I'm saying here is I want to create an array full of x values from negative one to one, and I want exactly n points. But first I have to specify how many points I want. Let's do a thousand. So what this is doing is it's creating an array from negative one to one of one thousand equally spaced points. Okay, next step is to define our function. So we're going to define Legendre as a function of x and n. Legendre polynomials are functions of x, but they also have different degrees. So you have the first degree, second degree, etc. So we need to specify that. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to call the previously built function Legendre. That's the thing that's coming out of SciPy. I'm going to say that leg is equal to Legendre of n. So that's giving me the nth, it's calling the nth degree Legendre polynomial. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my function p sub n, so the nth Legendre polynomial is equal to leg as a function of x. Okay, that's, that's the value that we're going to return. Now, this, this blue section here, this blue thing where I'm defining my function, that has no communication whatsoever to that SciPy library. It's, it's just me wanting to know exactly what I'm looking at when I start to reread a code or something. So it doesn't matter what you call it. We could call it Frank if we wanted to. Uh, so now we have our function that defines the Legendre polynomials. Now we just need to evaluate it at those x values. So we can say our func or something like that is equal to frank evaluated at those x values. The first entry in that function is x, so that's where I'm going to put my x vals. And let's look at the first three. Let's look at n equals 1, and then let's also look at 2 and 3. We're going to have to name them different things. Okay. And then we can plot out what all of these look like. So we can do plt.plot. Let's do x vals. And func is going to be the y values associated with our function that we defined. So func. And let's make this red dashes. Why not? And let's label it uh, n equals 1. And we're going to do the same thing for the other two. And you can see that this gets kind of tedious really fast if we want to plot out, say, a bunch of different Legendre polynomials. So I'm going to show you how to do this a little bit faster in a minute. Let's 
let's make this one blue and let's make this one green so the letters correspond to the color of the graph that you're doing and the dashes mean that I want dashed lines okay let's give this a title plt dot title say first three uh, piece of n okay let's add a little grid line to it uh, what else could we do we could do plt dot legend we got to add the legend that way we can actually see the labels and now we're ready to look at it unless I made an error somewhere oh, I didn't put an equal sign by n <laughs> okay great so there we have the first three n for the Legendre polynomials that looks great uh, now one thing that was interesting that I needed to be able to do for my senior thesis was not just look at the Legendre polynomials as a function of x but look at them as a function of the cosine of x. And the way that you can do that is we go back up to this function definition. Here we have it defined as a function of x, but what we want now is to define it as a function of the cosine of x. And we might as well just widen our limits a little bit. So we're gonna go from numpy.py. Numpy and let's see what this looks like. So now we get something that looks like some kind of distorted cosine wave. Great. Now, sometimes, so for my senior thesis, I had to take all of these things and I had to add them up. But I didn't feel like having to call this, you know, 20 or 30, 50 times uh, in order to get all of those y values. So one thing that you can do is we're going to erase all of this. Okay, so let's say that we want to look at the first 15 Legendre polynomials as a function of cosine theta. Well, that's screaming for loop. Any time you have to do something a bunch of times that, and you see yourself copying and pasting a lot, you can probably use a for loop somewhere to simplify your life. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for i, for, for i in range, and let's go from 1 to 16. So that means that we're going, Python uh, always ends one less than the cap for the for loop. So this is really going from 1 to 15. We're going to define our func, which is our y values, equal to frank uh, x vals, and we're going to plug in that index i. So that's going to be what our n is. So the first time that it iterates, func is going to be x vals at 1, and then it's going to also make it at 2. And what we're going to do at the end of each iteration of the for loop is we're going to add that to our plot. So we can do plt.plot xvals comma func. And uh, in order to keep track, see we can't just write n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3 all the way down. Uh, or else we'd end up just doing the same thing that we'd be doing before. We wouldn't need a for loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to say label equals n equals. Okay, so it looks weird right now. And we're going to add whatever index, whatever n we're using for that part of the for loop to our label. And the way that we do that is we write plus a string of those i. Okay, and that'll end that. We're not going to add a whole like we're not going to add plt.title through plt.show to the for loop because what that would do is it would end up creating a whole bunch of independent graphs and we don't want that. We want these all on one graph. So if we do this and we run it we get something that looks disgusting, but it looks exactly like what we said we wanted. It gave us 15 Legendre polynomials as a function of the cosine of theta. Cool. That looks pretty weird. <laughs> uh, but anyways, you, you can see how being able to import these libraries or knowing where to look in order to find these uh, can be really useful because Legendre polynomials are defined, well, Legendre functions are defined in terms of the nth derivative of the Legendre polynomial. So if you want to create these yourself, you need to develop some kind of recursion relation, 
And that can be really tedious to, to code if you really just want to plot out a few of them. So it can be really nice. It's really nice that you can just import a library and have direct access to that. So it does require that you have SciPy already installed in Python. Um, but one of the videos that I posted before went through exactly how to do this. It was the AP monitor thing. So if you check out the video that I made on uh, YouTube channels that are useful for physics majors, it has a link to his channel that has this stuff for you. That's probably going to be it for this video. I just wanted to show how to utilize the special function library from SciPy because it's kind of hard to find otherwise. And yeah, you could probably find stuff on Stack Overflow or something like that where you could read a literal code. But it can be a little overwhelming at times when you're just reading code rather than having someone walk you through the process. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know in the comments section if you did. And I'll see you guys there.